Hello, welcome to U.S. News and World Report. I'm Simon Owens, and here with me I have Francesco Gino, a professor of business administration at Harvard Business School and the author of Sidetracked, Why Our Decisions Get Derailed and How We Can Stick to the Plan. Uh, welcome, Francesco. Thank you for having me, Simon. Uh, so one of the fascinating things in your book uh, that I found was your chapter on advice. Um, and you did several experiments uh, where, to show how we often ignore good advice and how we actually often take bad advice. Can you talk a little bit about that and what kind of motivates us to uh, go to these polar opposites? Yes, it, it turns out that we exchange advice uh, every day from family, friends, and, and colleagues. And so I decided, I decided to study this topic. And what was fascinating about it is that there are lots of situations where even when the advice is good, we tend to reject it. And there is a basic psychological tendency uh, that we all have where we think very highly about our competence and our skills. And so when it comes to uh, getting advice from others, oftentimes we tend to reject it because we think that our opinion is really the valid one or our perspective is really the good one and, and that others uh, do not have uh, good things to say or to add to the decision. Mm -hmm. And there have been experiments that have shown that this is true, right? Exactly. So in my own research and the research I've conducted with my colleagues, we find that situation after situation when we put uh, people in conditions where they're facing a decision and they're receiving advice on it from others, they tend to weigh their own opinions much more than the opinions of others. Mm -hmm. And what about the experiments showing why we take bad advice? Like there was, there was one, I believe, with a blurry photo. Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's an experiment where we look at uh, different types of tasks or decisions where we might receive advice from others. And what is interesting is that uh, if you look at what organizations do, oftentimes we pay consultants a lot of money uh, to come in and, and, and give advice to managers or organizational members. And so Don Moore and I wanted to see what happens when the task is difficult versus easy. So in our experiments, we used for easy tasks uh, pictures of people. And in difficult tasks, uh, the pictures were actually blurred. And in this case, the advice was an estimate from another person on how much you thought the person, uh, what you thought the person's weight was. And what we were able to show is that on easy task, uh, basically we tend to discount the advice from others, and on difficult task, instead, uh, we tend to overweight it. And this is because, going back to the tendency I was talking about earlier, on all sorts of dimension, positive dimension, we think very highly of ourselves. So if you think about how good of decision makers we are, we tend to rate ourselves better than average. But when it comes to very difficult dimension, we see just the opposite. And so we thought that in the case of advice keep taking, uh, we would see an interesting consequence of that, where uh, if you're facing a difficult problem or a difficult task, you think that you're worse than everybody else, when in fact also others are as bad as you are. And so you tend to overweight their advice. And on easy tasks, you think you're better than anybody else, when in fact you're like anybody else. And so you tend to overweight the advice. And then we're also succumb to the, the sunk cost fallacy, correct? Uh, that exactly. if, we pay, if we pay someone, we're more likely to take their advice, even if it's not good. Exactly. And, and this is something that you see quite often, again, in organizations. I add the opportunity to work for a Fortune 500 companies in the summer of 2010, and I remember trying to help them out in terms of getting data from potential respondents, and I did a lot of work with organizations that do survey for you on different panels, and I was very happy because for one panel, I had an estimate of $10,000, and for a different one, the estimate was significantly higher. It was $50,000. So I went back to the team and I said, look, I was able to save you some money. You allocate $100,000 for this project, and we're going to get the data for $10,000. And the manager looked at me and said, no, 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 no. We should go with the estimates of $50,000, because people are going to be much more likely to believe that the data is good uh, if we spent a lot of money to collect it. Mm -hmm. And what about the way that emotions affect our decision-making, uh, specifically anger? 
Also, uh, in the context of advice taking, but in many other decision contexts, uh, emotions can come in the way of good decision making. So, for example, in the case of getting advice from others, if you're really angry, even when the anger was not triggered by the situation that you're facing, it tends to influence our decisions. And so, for the advice taking situation, we are likely to uh, reject everything that people have to say, but it also applies to other contexts. For example, one is negotiation. So if you're feeling angry at the table, uh, either because your counterpart is being difficult or because you got stuck in traffic on the way over to the meeting, uh, those feelings tend to uh, make you less rational or less able to listen to the good arguments that the other party might have to offer. Mm -hmm. And it, it extends even as far correctly, uh, correct as um, as just something as simple as facial expressions, right? The other person's, it doesn't even matter how, if you're angry, if you can detect anger on another person's face, it affects your, your decision. Exactly. I see that actually in your students. I, I often do an exercise where I ask uh, half of them to behave in an angry manner, and it's an exercise that teach them how to deal with difficult negotiators. And it's amazing how contagious anger can be. And so you start getting angry yourself, and uh, you see a lot of irrational uh, discussions happening at the negotiation table. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about a little bit about the practical applications. Um, you did one study, or, or I can't remember if you did the study or you pointed to the study, um, about um, how much just simple expressions of a gratitude between between an employer and his employees increases productivity. How, how much of a difference did you see? Yeah, so, so this is the research that I conducted together with Adam Grant, who's a professor at Wharton, and we were interested in seeing whether uh, expressions of gratitude that we receive not only make us feel a sense of self-worth, so we are worthy and we are good people, um, but whether they would also make us feel more helpful towards other people. And this is exactly what we found. And we ran uh, both experiment in the lab, but also field experiment in call centers where we show that if you're receiving an expression of gratitude, and it can be as simple as a thank you note, you're going to be much more helpful not only to the person who said thank you, but also to other people uh, down the road. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there was a 50% increase, I think, in the exactly. call center. Yeah. Yeah, which is quite uh, surprising, given, again, the simplicity of, of the intervention. Mm -hmm. What about some other practical applications of your research uh, in terms of making better decisions or avoiding bad ones? So in my book, Sidetracked, I talk about a series of principles, and they have uh, names like, for example, in the in, in the context of emotions, uh, the principle is called take your emotional temperature. So my hope is that for readers uh, going forward in the decisions that they make, that they're going to try to remember these principles and apply them at the time of decisions. So for example, the principle take your emotional temperature should allow us to remember that emotions oftentimes come in the way of good decision making and they could allow us to understand whether there are strong emotions like anger uh, that might derail our decisions in this particular moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, Francesca, those were the only, or uh, all the questions I had. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you so much for having me.